Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal, your Greater Toronto Area Real Estate Resource, updating you with the current market conditions so you can be informed whether you're a buyer or a seller. Most recently, we've finally seen our interest rates decrease. That's right, for the first time in over two years, the Bank of Canada decreased their interest rate rather than increased it. And although the interest rate decrease is not too significant to really make a dramatic difference in, in a purchaser's monthly expenditure, what so is that this gives buyers a lot more confidence knowing that we're in the right direction as far as interest rates decreasing in the future. I'm going to share with you how our interest rate has impacted our market and what's ahead. Do subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you are considering buying or selling, call me, call me, call me. And if you're a real estate agent looking to increase your business, make sure to reach out to me to learn more about eXp Realty. And the first chart that I want to draw your attention to is this over here where we're, what we're actually looking at is the number of showings that are taking place each day. As a real estate agent, we have access to a lot of technology which can tell us about market activity. And we were expecting that the interest rate decrease would result in us seeing more showings and therefore more offers. But we can see based on this chart here that volume of showings hasn't increased. Though at the same time, we should definitely acknowledge that we are in the summer. And usually we see June, July and August being fairly slow. And then the market tends to increase in terms of showings showings, offers, and sales volume in September and October. And then the activity decreases until the spring of the next year. And the market stats that were released the past month show this that the number of listings had really increased while the number of sales hadn't. And that really seems to be the case so far this month is that we still have a lot of inventory, in fact, more inventory and not as many listings selling. So if sellers are finding themselves in a tricky situation because they've waited for this interest rate decrease to take place because they were under the assumption that the market would have improved. Now they're listing their property only to find out that the interest rate decrease didn't make any difference whatsoever and activity is still low and they're not getting as many showings as expected. If there's any difference between the market now versus the market in the first quarter I'm seeing that sellers are now starting to admit that the prices have probably decreased to some extent whereas before a lot of sellers seemed a bit stubborn they were just willing to wait it out and be patient to get the price that they wanted even if they were asking for a premium although now people seem a bit humbled their understanding of the market and that if they actually do want to get their property sold and they're motivated then they should be adjusting the price accordingly depending on what the market's telling them and something positive about this is that we're seeing less listings opting for the bidding war strategy where we know that sellers can opt for uh, two different strategies. They can list their property under market value and expect a bidding war to take place, or they can list their property the traditional way where they leave a little bit of room for negotiation. So more sellers are opting for the latter strategy of leaving some room for negotiation of the understanding that they're not going to get over asking price. And this is actually better for our everyday buyer out there that wants to look at a property, know that they can afford it. See, it was challenging before because you would see a listing for $9.99 and it would sell for $1,200,000. However, our average price still remains over $1 million, which is actually one of the highest in all of Canada and North America. And CTV News recently released this article that actually said two Canadian cities were ranked the highest on a global list of most expensive places to buy a home, where we can see Hong Kong listed as number one, Vancouver as third, and Toronto in 11th place. And if you're wondering which areas have experienced a price increase versus price decrease, we can refer to this chart over here where we can see that Richmond Hill actually experienced uh, the greatest price increase from May 2023 to May 2024, but it was only by 0.8%. So basically insignificant. And you can assume that most areas have actually decreased in value. We can see here that Brampton had decreased the most by 9.76%, followed by Markham at 8.7%, Whitby at 6.74%, and Ajax decreasing in value the past year by just under 6%. I'd love to know your thoughts about our current real estate market right here in the greater Toronto area. Do comment in the comment section below. If you are considering buying or selling, call me, call me, call me. And if you're a real estate agent looking for a great brokerage to help you further increase your business or if you're a new agent that wants to ensure they're being mentored they're being trained in an environment conducive to their success make sure to reach out to me to learn more about exp realty i thank you for your support and i look forward to seeing you next time